We're ready. We're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. That's fine. We are rolling. Hi, Jack. Hi, Rich. What are we talking about today? We are talking about two games that, legally speaking, are not Mega Man. So Mega Man mm -hmm. is a, 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 a tiny blue robot yeah. who jumps and he shoots and he runs through levels and he encounters like a number of different bosses mm -hmm. and he defeats the bosses and he takes their power mm -hmm. and he can use their power. Yeah. So let's talk about Mighty Number no. 9. Uh, in Mighty Number no. 9, you play as Beck, a tiny blue robot that jumps and shoots, and you fight other robot bosses, and after you beat them, you can use their powers. But it's legally distinct from Mega Man, who is called Mega Man. And not Beck. And not Beck. Uh-oh. A security bot. And it's out of control, like all the others. Beck, there's no other way. You'll need to fight your way through. You can handle this. I know you can. Professor, I... I'll do it. But... <laughs> here, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares about this, though. Here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's yeah. why this... Here's why Mighty Number no. 9 is even a thing. Yeah. Capcom has basically washed their hands of Mega Man games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so then one of the creators of Mega Man, Ki Ki Kaiji Kenjo? Kaiji Inafune. Kaiji Inafune. Yeah. One, of the, one of the people who worked on Mega Man, he just left Capcom. Mm -hmm. He's like, fuck it, I'm making my own Mega Man game, mm -hmm. only with blackjack and hookers. You know what? Forget the Mega Man. <laughs> and that's where all the Kickstarter money went. And that's why the game had problems. <laughs> Dr. Sanda, it's a temporary blackout caused by the erratic power supply. It may also trigger irregularities in other robots on site. Proceed with due caution, then. So here, here's why we're specifically talking about Mega Man, because that was part of his Kickstarter pitch. I, I want to make a not Mega Man game with a new IP so we can take this character and make cartoons with him, make comic books with him. He can, you know, because they can't do that with Mega Man right yeah. now. They don't have any control over Mega Man, but we can have control over Beck. The only part he forgot about is that Mega Man are really good games. And that's why people care about that IP. And ah. with Mighty Number no. 9, what you have is, I'm not gonna say it's a bad game, it's just very bland. It's a mixed bag. A lot of people are just flat out shitting on the game. Yeah. It doesn't deserve that. No, no, no. It, it doesn't deserve that. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a lot of fun in there. When you look at Mighty No. 9, the first and most obvious thing you notice is that the game is ugly as shit. I mean, it, it's, so it's ugly. like I vomit. Yes. The game is I vomit. Um, <laughs> you actually have fairly decent character models. They're not, they're not bad character models. I know you don't like the style they're in. I don't. But. They're nicely constructed models, but the levels themselves, it's just, it's the ugliest way to do a side scroller is to do that kind of 3D, but it's not really full 3D. It's like everybody's running on these elongated rectangles. But it's not even, like, it's not, there's no, like, dramatic lighting. There's no sharp color contrast. There's no, there's no life to the levels. Did, did you see the tech demo? Yes, it yes. looks better, and they, they they go out of their way. I, I believe when they show that tech demo. Now the games, the finished games, are not going to look anything like this. Not in the way they meant. Crikey, it's like every bot in America went completely nuts all at once. It's all blah. The, the entire game for me is a is a solid D. If we were going to well, if we know, were going to grade games, it doesn't you, fail but it comes just close enough to passing. You gotta break it down into its components. Let's do Let's that. Let's do this quickly. Okay. Controls. Controls great. A plus. A plus. A plus, um, the, the dash mechanics, fun. You have like infinite air dash. Yeah. Um, there was a section early on in the game, like I, I'd only been playing the game for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And there was a section where these fireballs are falling down all over the sky. And I was pretty reliably like dashing around and dodging them and the controls were tight. Yes. And I think when you're talking about a 2D side-scrolling platform, that's the most important thing, good controls. 
Great controls! A plus! Boss battles. A minus to, to B plus. B plus. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really like the fire guy. You're jumping over him is the obvious pattern, and you do the, the things you need to do to beat yep. the bad guy. Yep. Uh, a lot of times in um, Mega Man, you know, he, their enemies are vulnerable to a specific weapon. The boss, mm. like the fire boss, is really weak to ice, yeah. and it makes the boss fights trivial. Uh, these bosses have weaknesses to weapons, but. None that made the fight itself seem trivial to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. There uh, there were obviously some better boss fights than others. But that's any game. That's any it's game. Even any of the old Mega Man games. Absolutely. Every boss fight felt like it was an appropriate challenge. Every death felt earned and every victory was very satisfying. Uh, except for maybe the sniper level. His boss fight was really easy because you could really easily get behind him. But then you, you, you beat the boss. Yeah. And then you actually convert them into being a good guy. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll, they'll like make cameos in the other levels. Yeah. And, and they'll, they'll, they'll help you out in the background. <laughs> they'll take some kind of obstacle away that you would have had. Yeah. That was neat. That was adorable. That was neat. Agreed. B b boss battle. <laughs> yeah. Um, solid B. B plus. B, oh, B, B plus. plus. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is an old school game. If you can't make it through the level and the boss in your allotted lives, you have to start over from scratch. And some of the boss battles were pretty tough. And so sometimes you can get all the way to the boss, then die three times, you have to start the level all the way over again, which normally would kind of be a pain in the ass. Like even if it's a good level, it's, it's a challenge. It's a hard mm -hmm. challenge. Uh, luckily, Mighty Number no. 9 solves this problem by having incredibly short and easy levels. So you can get to that boss battle real it's, fast. It's almost as if they were lazily slapped together. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess it was just really good level design, though. Because, you know, because limited lives. <laughs> well, it's a mixed bag. There's some levels that felt about right. Mm -hmm. uh, the Helicopter Man level. Oh, yeah. That was a decent good. level. That yeah. was a decently long level. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, 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 the sniper uh, level, mm -hmm. that was a, a clever premise where, you know, you'd see the laser sight and that would be the pattern, the bullets yeah. would follow. That was, that was a clever and, twist. And the sniper level, you could go left or right. And you had to cir circle through the level a couple times. Interesting twist. You had to actually like search for the final robot. That ah, was neat. But then you had crap like, like uh, the, the, the ice level. You jump in the water and you jump out of the water, this short ice path. You, oh, you got the boss. Oh, that took no time at all. <laughs> there, there's even a section of the underwater ice level where you can air dash over every single enemy. They, they did not care about that level at all. Level design is horrible. I'm, I'm unsure if, if, if the levels are as bad as I think they are or if just the extremely ugly visuals just add to it all. Well, see if you can try to separate them. I think the level design is incredibly simplistic and beyond a few exceptions, uh, Fs across the board. Do you remember that truck that looked like it was made out of cardboard boxes? <laughs> yes. So le level design, fairly important. F. A solid F. Here we go. 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 And then we get into visuals, which is, you know, gameplay visuals, hand in hand. Yeah. I'm going solid F again. <laughs> I think the game is ugly as sin. Yes. The, the thing is, though, that's, that's the least important part of the classic 2D side-scroller pie. It's, all those other things mm. that involve gameplay are far more important. Not that... Not that visuals are completely worthless. Right. It didn't kill the game for me. I don't know what they were thinking. All right, here's, let's, let's start talking about the Kickstarter. Okay, Because sure. they asked for $900,000, mm -hmm. which not that much money in terms of game development. Oh no, relatively small budget. Relatively small budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He made four million. Yeah. 
A lot of people, I think, are mad that they made so much and the final product looks like crap. Yep. Yeah. How reasonable is that? Um, I think I think it's fairly reasonable. Well, he asked for nine hundred thousand. <laughs> I think I think morally, mm -hmm. all he's obligated to deliver is a nine hundred thousand dollar production value gain, and the rest mm -hmm. I would legitimately consider profits mm -hmm. for the product that you were making that you said you were going to make for nine hundred thousand. Yep. When you invest in a Kickstarter program, you are investing. And with investment, there is a risk involved. If you invest in the stock market, it could tank, you could lose all your money. Yeah. That's part of investing. Risk, reward, right? And I think a lot of people felt that their risk was mitigated because of Kaiji because he's been in the games industry for so long and he's been part of making the games that he was now going to make independently and so i think people willfully forgot about the risk failure is always an option and one of the actually i think a beautiful irony a beautiful tragedy a hilarious tragedy to this Kickstarter is I think it's made a lot of people sympathetic to big studios. <laughs> this was their chance to, we make good, not Mega Man games. And you're gonna wanna play every one we make because this is gonna be popular, we're gonna keep cranking them out. This is gonna be our new series, our own IP, and we're gonna make, we're gonna make cartoons and comic books and with all this stuff. It's idiotic because the final product has no polish. Yep. They should have polished the fucking shit out of this. They'd be making money for like the next decade, cranking out clones. But, he, but here's the thing. This was not a passion project for Kaiji. This was a business opportunity, and apparently he's a poor businessman. Because <laughs> my guess is a real studio would say, we need a bigger budget, you need a bigger team to get the finished product that you want. Well, if you look at his concept art, the, the dramatic lighting effects, the 3D effects, all of the level design that goes into it, he did not have the budget to make the game he wanted. How big was his team? I haven't, I haven't, I honestly, I haven't followed the Kickstarter drama because I don't give a shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter how big your team is, you need the money to buy the talent. And he is not a good enough producer, apparently, to get the talent on his team that he needed. It wasn't the talent, though? Wasn't it like a laundry list of former Mega Man devs? Who knows? I, I don't know. I wasn't paying that much attention. Like I said, I... But then again, mm -hmm. then again with the former Mega Man devs, look at the Mega Man track record. Mega Man's glory days mm -hmm. were 20 fucking years ago. <laughs> yep. Every, <laughs> every single recent Mega Man game that they've made, mm -hmm. especially the ones with the pseudo 3D look to them, mm -hmm. have all looked like crap. Mm -hmm. But I think investors feel tricked because of his name and because of his reputation and because of the concept art and the concept levels that he put forward, they feel tricked. Kaije has been in the business for a long time and has been making Mega Man games for a long time. And so I think that's where people kind of threw out their doubt, but you know, because he's not, he's not a, He's not a, a fly-by-night programmer, you know? But I, I think Kaeje is the thing that proves that just because you've been doing a job for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that you're good at it. Damn. I feel really Damn. bad about that. I thought it was a <laughs> Damn, it... that's a burn, man. That's a sick burn. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, right? I don't know that I can go that far. You don't like that? It's just an incredibly mediocre game, man. <laughs> There's been too many good Mega Man games. Huh? Something happened. There's been too many good Mega Man games. And he's been associated with too many of them for him to have nothing to do with that. Associated with. He didn't create it. He didn't draw it. Associated with. If he didn't have that much to do with it, you say, get, get the fuck out of here. We don't, we make these games without you. We don't need to advertise you. Hey, hey, I got, I Who got. Who the fuck are you? You did an animation? Eh. I got coffee for Scorsese. I'm directing a movie now. He had to have been more involved I'm, I'm than sure. that. I'm sure. 
or he's just a good businessman. His, his name has been to look at Medi number nine. He's not a good businessman. He's. <laughs> I bet he made money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> that would make him a con man. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Even still, once you take a look at the, the mighty number nine report card, mm -hmm. Once you once you average all of that together, what you still have is somewhere in the C range. Maybe high D. Maybe a D plus. C C to C minus. They could. I don't. You know, it's ugly. So what? <laughs> the, the the big killer is the awful level design, yeah. and I think a lot of that's offset by fun bosses, which is what you want in a Mega Man game, yeah. and good controls, which is also what you want in a Mega Man game. Yeah. Since I, I, I'm saying final product is like a C, but people are treating this game like it's a, just a complete piece of shit. And I don't think right. it is. No, no. Now, I'm gonna say, what if this weren't a Kickstarter? What if, what if he just said, you know, I got a private backer mm -hmm. and we are making a Mega Man-like game? No Kickstarter. Sure. Do you get, do you get the outrage and the drama? Hmm. Uh, no, probably not. I think there'd be some small smatterings of this isn't the Mega Man I know. But, right. but, well, then, but, but it, here's the other thing that would happen, is this game would come out, people would play it, and instantly forget about it. Careful, Beck. I don't know, like, I think there's a lot redeemable in the game. That fucking dash, that dash is so much fun. That's why I'm saying the game's not terrible. The game is not terrible. And I agree with you. But, but you know, the, the reception's been terrible mm -hmm. and it's done. It's over, yep. the society is judged and, yep. well, it's over. We're never, we're never gonna see another Mega Man game ever again. It's just not gonna happen, it's dead, mm -hmm. it's dead. So next, I wanna talk about 20XX. And, and in 20XX, uh, you play as a little blue robot who jumps around and shoots uh, with a gun hand. Uh, you also fight robot bosses, and after you defeat the robot bosses, you get their powers. Oh! Well, that sounds like a novel concept. Is there another character in the game, or is it just a little blue girl? Oh, no, actually, you can switch to be a, a different uh, red robot who has a, a sword. Oh! Oh! Yeah. A completely original concept. This, so uh, before we get too deep into 20XX, right now, as we are playing it and talking about it, this is an early access. Uh, so anything we talk about can change. It's, al it's already changed. Uh, like I, I played it a month or two ago yeah. and it felt, uh, it felt different even then. Yeah. So it seems like they're updating it fairly frequently, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are into it. And so they're using, instead of Kickstarter, they're using early access to get funds to complete the project. Uh, but you can you know, buy it and play it right now. And, and the give for this one, it's Mega Man with procedurally generated levels that's a roguelike. At, 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 at least that's more of an original twist. It's not just, <laughs> we're making Mega Man, only it's not Mega Man. Uh, at least that adds a, 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 a wrinkle to right. it. So, uh, much like any other roguelike, you have to make it through every level and every boss in one life, and if you die, that's it. You have to start over again. Uh, procedurally generated levels. Uh, again, very early uh, in the development, and so you'll see a lot of similar level set pieces. You know, they have the the teleporters and yeah. the moving platforms. They have. Uh, but I've been I've been in some of the later. I mean, I just played some today, and I noticed less repetition. They're get, it's getting. So it's a lot it's, it's evolving. It's evolving pretty quickly. My <laughs> my my early impression was, I, I'm seeing a lot of the same things over and over. <laughs> Everything looks the samey, but they're slowly diversifying. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm still really fucking sick of shooting at those bats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of bats. I don't even care if they add in like enemies that play the exact same way. Just change the fucking sprite. 
th this is actually a game that I'm really excited to pick up and play every once in a while. I really like trying to make it through levels here and there. Um, I, I, I'm Mighty Number Nine's controls in general, I think, are far tighter than 20 XXs. I don't know. I think they're about the same, and, and with tw and especially with 20 XXs wall slide, like I, th their platforming, I think, is much tighter. I felt I felt more accurate with my jumps and whatnot. In, in, in Mighty, Mighty Number, Number Nine? Nine, yeah. Oh no, no. I mean, you could, you could argue, I guess, with this, that the whole roguelike thing is starting to get played out. Mm -hmm. It's not, there's a ton of games that do this now, from Crypt of the Necrodancer to Enter the Gungeon, mm -hmm. Nuclear Throne, FTL. There's a number, a lot of games that are doing this, but I don't care because it's fun. It is. It's it is a fun. neat, permadeath's a neat way to play a game. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to carry the torch on, to keep that, to keep that like difficulty level high but you know, you all, much like Crypt of the Necrodancer, you can always you can spend stuff you've earned to you know get new upgrades, yeah. and you get little rewards here and there to keep you interested in the game. I swear to God, though, every time I find a good power up, I'm near death, and I don't get to use it for long. <laughs> I got the dash, air dash. Oh I, oh, I fell off the cliff and I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's really neat. It's it's this really fun concept. The the enemies, though they do repeat a little too often, constantly, constantly. They're still fun. The bats, the tank guys, the Oof. the catapult arms, the angel ladies who shoot like their enemies are unique, and each has a distinct attack. I'm I'm sure they're working on it. I could use a little more variety. Sure. Uh, let's compare the enemy variety and say Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> okay. Oh, do you remember the enemies uh, that were boxes? But then they changed it up a little bit in Mighty Number no. Nine, and they had enemies that were little boxes. But then they changed it up again, and you got to fight a big fucking box. Good. The, uh, I'm, I'm gonna blame early access for this. I, I I don't feel like I have a solid goal in 20XX. I don't I feel like there's something I'm working towards, just this is the next boss, yeah. this is the next boss. I do think that's an early access problem yeah. where eventually they will have a small little story bit. They will have maybe a little story thing that you're working towards. This game is pretty early. And early relative access. to Mighty Number no. 9, which does this really kind of ugly 3D, 2D side-scrolling. This is some pretty nice sprite artwork. Everything looks crisp and clear. I I, <laughs> I know what it is. The platforms look like platforms. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, nothing looks like a rectangle that's just floating in space. Yeah, it, look, it looks like pretty classic SNES pixel art. It looks really nice. Yeah. It's really... You know, the, the reason that I wanted to talk about 20XX with Mighty Number no. 9. Not only because they are two games that are surely not Mega Man games, but also they're very similar and they, they have both attempted to bring the Mega Man genre of action platforming into the next generation. And I believe one handles it significantly better than the other. One handles it okay, it just soiled its own reputation. It shit its pants. It, it shit in its bed. It's a, it's a nice comfy bed, <laughs> but there's just shit all over the sheets. Just, you don't want to sleep in you that bed, You don't want to sleep in that bed. I don't want to go near that bed. <laughs> it's covered in shit. It, it reeks of Kickstarter drama and, and ugly graphics. <laughs> but this is a cushy mattress. <laughs> that doesn't... <laughs> First of all, your analogy makes no sense. I want to let you know that.
So who who wins the the battle of the not Mega Mans? As like as far as recommendations go, and who wins the battle of legally not Mega Man? I in general would not recommend Mighty Number no. Nine because it's just kind of blah. Anyone who's a who's a fan of those kind of games would play it and go. Eh. Mighty Number no. Nine is like a Steam sale game. Sure, yeah, maybe. You know, you use the controls, see what they got. It's like, you know, five bucks, sure, five bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah spend five, five bucks, bucks on that. Like, I, I know they're working on porting it over to handhelds. Eh, it could be a fun handheld game, I guess. Eh. 20, 20XX on the other hand is one I would love to see what it has done. Mm. I don't think they're there yet, but I can see they're clearly working towards something decent. Oh. 20XX for me is a huge recommendation. I think people need to have this. It's incredibly fun. It's a new take on the genre, and it's it's just neat. I'm not I'm not 100% there yet. Oh yeah, 20XX. Oh, but it's, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Mm. I'm super there. I'm super in 20XX. Oh. I, I'll say the randomly generated bits are working better for me than I thought it would. Mm. I figured the level design would be crap, but with randomly generated stuff, mm. it works pretty decently. Whereas Mighty Number no. Nine, which has crafted levels and they're just they're just terrible. I, it's kind of the opposite yeah. of what I would have expected. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, think, I think what we're saying is that basically an algorithm is a better level designer than Keiji and Afune. <laughs> I mean...